Hello, hello everybody and welcome to tonight's live. Um, I am Sarah Archer and I am one of Flexible Working People's expert coaches, uh, which I'm absolutely loving. I'm loving being an expert coach and interacting with you all, working with some of you, supporting you in your posts. Um, so it's fantastic to be here and um, I know that it will take a little while for people to, to join um, because it always takes a little bit of time for people to find um, the live. So as soon as you arrive, do say hello, do let me know that you are here, give me a little wave or a comment, that would be fantastic. Um, because it's, uh, it's going to be a cracker of a session tonight. I'm very excited about um, talking to you <laughs> about the four steps to accelerate your career. So, um, yeah, so we, just, we won't start quite yet. We're just going to wait for a few more people to arrive um, into the session. Um, I've got my crazy dog in here with me tonight because she's very anxious. She wants to be with me all the time. So I'm hoping she's not going to demand to be let out. I might have to get up and open the door for her. But anyway, um, if you're here, let me know. Give me a little wave and tell me um, how you're feeling about your career at the moment. Are you, are you feeling stuck? Are you plateauing? Are you excited and motivated about your career? Are you a bit overwhelmed? So maybe just let me know um, how you're feeling about your career. Um, and we will obviously dive into the topic very soon tonight. So tonight I'm going to share with you this four-step formula um, to accelerate your career and get the kind of career success that you really want. Um, and by the end of the session, you're going to know exactly what you need to do uh, to get that promotion or that leadership role, that pay rise, or get something in your career that's going to give you that fulfillment and satisfaction and i've got a special offer for you at the end of the session so do hang around and uh, we'll have a q a at the, at the end of the session too and also i'll tell you a bit more about uh, my special offer you know because it's hard when you've got a busy life to be really intentional about your career and if you're anything like me <laughs> your kind of needs fall to the bottom of the pile so what I want for you tonight is just to have a bit of time we won't be more than an hour we might be less maybe about 45 minutes for you to have some time to think about you your career what you want and just you know see that there is a, a way to get the kind of career success that you want, that's the process that you can go through, and that's what I'm going to share in my four steps. So um, get comfortable, maybe grab a, grab a notepad and pen, because you might want to take some notes. Avoid the temptation to <laughs> do the washing up while you're listening. Give yourself the gift of this uh, 45 minutes to an hour to really kind of engage and think about what you want in your career. Um, if you've done one of my webinars before, you know I like to make them interactive. I'm going to ask you questions. <laughs> Hopefully you're gonna answer some of the questions. But also if you've got a question for me, then um, pop it into the chat and um, I will answer it either at that time or at the end of the session. Um, and it will be recorded and it'll be in the guide section of the Facebook group. Uh, so if you're watching on replay, hello. Um, do you pop into the chat that you're watching on replay and if you've got a question you're watching on replay then tag me into the comments with the question and i will come back and answer it for you so welcome welcome i can see we've got quite a few more people in the group now which is fantastic in the live um so if you are just arriving um do just share with me how you're feeling about your career at the moment are you excited are you stuck are you motivated are you overwhelmed what's the word that would sort of describe how you're feeling about your career right now and while you're doing that i'm going to tell you just a little bit about me uh, i'm not going to go into lots of detail because i always find it really annoying webinars when i want to get to the content and someone's droning on for 10 minutes about what they do so i'm going to be short and sweet but if you haven't met me before or worked with me then um i'm sarah archer i'm a career success and confidence coach and i um I'm passionate about enabling and empowering women to have the career success that they want on their terms. And we'll talk a bit more about on their terms uh, tonight in the session. Um, and, you know, I understand how difficult it can be or how challenging it can be to juggle 
family responsibilities, caring responsibilities, with having a successful career. When my kids were little, I was an HR manager and then an HR director, and I worked part-time and in a job share. And, you know, it was challenging to make it all work, but it is possible to carve out the career that you want and be a great mum and not let work um, impinge on your time with your family um, or your caring responsibilities. Um, so tonight we're going to be you know, helping you get back in touch with your ambition or understand what your ambition looks like and what that means to you in terms of your career success criteria. So that's where we're heading tonight. Um, so obviously we're going to be looking at um, how you can kind of move up or move on in your career and achieve the kind of career success you want but I'd like to know from you if you're up for telling me um, what is kind of getting in your way so what's stopping you um, from accelerating your career now you know what is getting in the way so if you're if you're happy to just pop that in the comments and um, let me know what's kind of getting in your way at the moment from you accelerating your career you know because there's a whole myriad of reasons why you might feel you can't accelerate your career at the moment you know it could be just the fact that life is so busy um, you just don't have any time to think about your career or progress it you know maybe it's your boss or the culture of your organization doesn't really it's not conducive to helping you progress or you're just feeling stuck and overwhelmed or you know, maybe you're wanting somebody to notice you working really, really hard and to spot your potential and to give you an opportunity. Um, or maybe you just feel that there's some big gaps in your experience and skills. But let me know if you can what's, in the, what's stopping you at the moment from um, accelerating your career. You're a very quiet group at the moment, so I'm not getting any comments or even a wave hello. So do let me know if you are here. Give me a little wave, make me feel that um, I'm not alone in the live. Um, okay, so if you can, share what's stopping you at the moment. But also I want you to kind of imagine what it would feel like to get that promotion or that new job that you're thinking about. You know, to be doing something that really lights you up that makes you feel like you're fulfilling your potential, um, that gives you that stretch and challenge and allows you to have impact and influence, but feels balanced with your life. Okay, so pop a yes into the comments. That's a really simple one you can do. Pop a yes into the comments if that's what you want. If you want to have that kind of career where you get that stretch, that challenge, it lights you up, you love it, but you don't feel overwhelmed with it. You've got the stretch, but not the stress. So let me know if that's what you're hoping for. Now it's really weird because it's telling me that I've got three comments and I can't see any comments in my comments feed. So I'm apologizing in advance if you are commenting, but I'm some, for some reason I'm not seeing the, the comments, but hopefully they will start to come through. If not, I might have to have my phone open at the same time. But let's, let's carry on and see. Um, now it's saying I've got four comments, but I can't see any comments. How strange. Okay, well, we'll, we'll carry on. I'm not going to try and get too distracted by that. Okay, so uh, if you did answer yes, but I just can't see your yeses, you're definitely in the right, the right place, because tonight I'm going to share these four steps, which is part of my group program, which is the Career Success Mastermind, that will take you from feeling a bit stuck and overwhelmed into being clear about what you need to do to make that career success happen um, and I'm also going to share some stories of women that I've worked with that will hopefully give you um, some inspiration about making it happen for you um, okay so um, let's just talk about some of the kind of common uh, reasons why we as women don't always get um, the career success that we are looking for um, so it could be that we're just playing small, you know, so we're not valuing the skills, the experiences that we have. We look at a person's spec and we think, mm, I can't do 100% of that, I'm not going to apply. Or we think, I'm not really ready for that leadership role, um, I'm a bit worried about the strategy part of it, I'm an operational person, could I step up to it? Or maybe we have some limiting beliefs about what our capability could be. 
or maybe we're caring too much about what other people think. We're worried that um, they might think we're getting too big for our boots if we go for that promotion. We're comparing ourselves to others. Um, or we're not being intentional. We don't have a plan. Maybe we fell into our original career or we just kind of react to something we might see and, and we don't feel strategic about our career. Um, or we haven't built a support network, both at work but outside work, to enable us to create the kind of career um, success that we want. Um, or we don't really like um, self-promotion. That can be a real kind of block, having to self-promote. Um, or, as we touched on before, not prioritising ourselves or feeling like an imposter. So those can be some of the kind of common reasons why we hold ourselves back and we don't get the kind of career success that we want. But I'm hoping that if you are identifying with one of those reasons or more than one of those reasons, my my four steps tonight will help you work through that so that these things don't get in the way because we don't want you to feel that you're held back by some of these um, things that um, impact us uh, for a whole variety of different reasons. Okay, so um, I've still not got any comments coming through, which is really weird. So um, welcome if you're joining. Um, okay, Katie is sending me the comments, thank you Katie, on my phone. Uh, so, okay, that's really weird. Let me just see if I can do something. Katie said maybe full screen. Uh, okay, ah, oh, yeah, that's worked. Okay, thank you Katie, I can see the comments coming through now. Thank you very much. Um, okay, and we've got some, some men. <laughs> oh, welcome, welcome very much. I'm kind of focusing a bit more on women, so please forgive me if you are a man and you're listening. I'm sure some of these things apply to you as well. Um, so, okay, let me now, I can see the comments, let me introduce you to my four-step formula, uh, which isn't rocket science. It's very simple, but it's very effective, and I use it with my clients as part of my uh, mastermind program. Um, and the first step is to get clear. Okay, so getting clear about what you really, really want and what your success criteria are. Because um, being clear about your success criteria in terms of what would make you feel that your career is a success, and obviously that's going to be different for everybody, but getting clear about that will help you with your career decision making is a role right for me, but it will also give you a sense of purpose because you will know what kind of role you're heading for, and we know that having a sense of purpose gives us um, well-being. It increases our well-being by having a sense of purpose. Um, now often the career success criteria connected to our values, um, but you know traditionally careers are very much seen as kind of uh, vertical, climbing the ladder either as a specialist or as a manager, and our success is judged by status, job title, pay, those kind of things. But actually careers are evolving and we're looking much more at career success criteria being very personal to us in terms of um, what might make you feel that your career is a success. So for some people it could be around having um, creativity in their role, it could be around having flexibility, it could be about being able to be um, innovative or have challenge that's not about managing people but might be around, about running different projects. So it's really understanding what your success criteria is um, so that you can get that clarity about what is going to be the right next role for you. And I'm going to talk, talk you through how you can get clear about your success criteria in a minute. I just want to share with you um, one of my clients. So I want you to meet Emma, who was uh, part of my group program. And Emma was a senior leader in the arts and heritage sector. And she was sort of at that pivotal point of, should I go for a director role or not? And she, um, her, her role model for director in her organisation was, she felt, very uninspiring. She thought it would be long hours, it would be more stress, and it wouldn't be very rewarding. And that was why she was really unsure about whether she wanted to go for a director. So what we did is we helped her to get clear by actually having some conversations with people who were um, being successful leaders, but on their terms. So I connected her with some... Um, 
female leaders that I'd worked with previously who were very inspiring in the way that they were operating as leaders. And she really began to open her eyes to different forms of leadership and to really understand that she could be a leader but on her terms, in her way. And so what she then did was to prioritise her personal development in her current role and she looked at things like how could she get more uh, exposure to the senior team, how could she increase her gravitas and get feedback on whether she was coming across with gravitas, looking at gaps she could plug in terms of her functional specialism. And she researched other sectors that she wanted to work in because she didn't want to stay in her sector, she wanted to go and do something different. And um, I spoke to her last week, she was going for a second interview for a director role in a, a really great charity and she was feeling really, really clear about the type of role she would say yes to. So she worked really hard about understanding what success looked like for her and what kind of leader she wanted to be. So she got clarity on that as well, which sat well with her values. Um, so let me know that in the, in the um, comments, do you have a plan? Are you clear about your next role, what your next role would be? Do you have that clarity? And while you're, you're popping that in the chat, I'm just going to talk you through a few options for how you could get clear, because um, I want you to kind of have some different ideas about what you could do to get that clarity about what your next role might be. So the first one is to be really, really honest with yourself about what you want to achieve and what your level of ambition is. Because again, as we talked about, um, you know, society pushes us down, success being a particular route, but you know, what does that look like for you? What do you really, really want in terms of your success criteria? You could then do a values check-in. So um, do you know what your values are? Do you need to reconnect with them? Do you need to re-energize your values? Do you need to actually look at whether there's a mismatch between your organization and your values? Because values can shift both as an organization but also as, a, as an individual. Uh, and then I've got um, kind of a fun thing you could do as well. You could create a career bucket list, which um, is kind of thinking about, okay, in the span of my career, what do I really want to tick off? Like we have life bucket lists, you could think about a career bucket list. You know, So do you want to be a keynote speaker at a conference one day? Do you want to be a mentor to um, people coming up in your profession? Do you want to be a trustee? Do you want to get something published? Do you want to lead a particular type of project? You know, So think about what would be on your career bucket list because that will just give you some clues about what the next role or the next few roles might have in store for you. And the other one that I've got, which is also quite a nice, fun one to do, is to think about um, what would be meaningful for you. So, um, obviously, when I work with clients, a lot of the time they say, well, I want work to be meaningful. And um, that can be a really tricky thing to actually identify because, again, it's quite subjective. Um, but there's a really kind of nice way of looking at it, and that's to think about... Um, something called uh, living a good life because Aristotle way way back came up with this idea of eudaimonic well-being <coughs> eudaimonic meaning um, having meaning basically and he said to have meaning you would need to live a good life so obviously what does that mean what does living a good life mean uh, but there's a really kind of nice way you can do it and you can fast forward into the future and look at meeting up with your eight-year-old self so um, a really, you know, wise woman or man um, who's lived a good life. So looking back on that good life that your future self, your eight-year-old self has lived, thinking about what made it a good life in terms of my career. So it might be thinking, okay, well, I was really glad that I was brave enough to say yes to the opportunities that presented themselves to me that were right for me. Or maybe it might be, well, I'm really glad that I took five years out when my kids were small to spend time with them. Or it could be something else, you know, but just looking back and thinking, what would make a good career life for me? What would I feel proud of that I had done in that time span can help give you clues about what's important to you and what your kind of career success definition would look like. 
So there's just a few ideas you can use to try and get that clarity about what might be right for you in terms of the next step in your career. So do post any questions that you might have um, in the chat on that while we move on to uh, step two. Um, so obviously step one is getting clear. Step two is a really important one and that's getting confident. Um, because obviously um, career confidence is really important when you're wanting to accelerate your career. And there's all sorts of kind of minefields around confidence. So, you know, we might have a story that we're telling ourselves about what's possible for us. So um, we do need to kind of just de develop a bit of awareness about what's going on when we're thinking about making a change, you know, what's popping up for us. Um, but also recognising that everybody has confidence gremlins, if you like, for want of a better phrase, but it's about how you how you manage them. Um, because, you know, even the person who you look around and you think is the most confident person in the world, they will be having all sorts of stuff going on that you just can't see because they're managing it and not letting it get in the way. But I've worked with enough people to know that, you know, career confidence can really put a block on, on uh, career progress um, because you just can't get past some of those limiting beliefs or um, inner critic, you know, all those things that get in our way. Um, and it is, you know, it is complex. It's, I'm not saying it's an easy thing to, to manage. It is complicated because we've got all sorts of different things appearing for us. There's self-sabotage, there's limiting beliefs, there's imposter syndrome, there's, um, you know, low self-belief, there's the inner critic, there's that kind of negative bias that our brain has where we look for risk that can sometimes be heightened so you know it, it can be a challenge to progress your career if your confidence isn't where you want it to be but the great thing is you know confidence is around 50 percent nature and 50 percent kind of our environment and our experiences which means that we can change how we feel in terms of our confidence levels. So just because you might be feeling confident about progressing your career today, doesn't mean that that's always going to be like that. There are ways that you can um, learn, which I'll share a few with you tonight, to boost your confidence. So um, if you feel uh, up to it, maybe let me know what you would say your career confidence level is um, today. So on a scale of one to 10, do you feel, you know, 10 being super confident? Where are you in terms of thinking about progressing your career? Where would you say you are in terms of confidence levels? So um, if you just pop in the chat uh, what your confidence level is, that would be great to know. Um, while you're doing that, I'm just going to tell you about... Um, a client that I had called Karen, who uh, was one of my one-to-one -one clients, and she was a chief exec. And you'd kind of make an assumption, wouldn't you, that if she was a chief exec, she was super confident, she wouldn't have any confidence issues. But actually, she came to me because she'd been in her job for over 10 years as a chief exec. She'd done some amazing things, but she knew it was time to move. And she was just feeling really wobbly about making the next step in her career. She hadn't applied for a job for years, she hadn't had an interview for years, um, and she was just feeling really unsure about making that next step. Uh, she also had a really huge job. She was it was really full on, and she wasn't prioritising herself. And we all know when we're applying for jobs, it's a full time job in itself, or it can feel like that. Um, so, what we did is we actually focused on her achievements because there were loads of achievements that she had done. She had. Uh, done change management, stakeholder management, she'd introduced new systems and processes, she'd had difficult uh, conversations with um, staff and volunteers, you know, she'd really done loads and loads of great stuff in this uh, role, but um, she needed to be able to see it. So we worked on her really understanding and appreciating and reconnecting with all those achievements that she'd got in the role. And we also did some work on her mindset um, through using affirmations which are intentional directional statements because she had to believe that she was capable of doing um, another chief exec role and so um, the affirmations are obviously a way to um, reprogram your thoughts and to just start to focus on some of the more positive um, 
aspects that can help you feel that you are able to do what you need to do in terms of applying for that role, getting that next role. Um, so she didn't get the first role she applied for because she just wasn't in the right place for that. But she has then since gone on and secured another role. But she knows that what the work we started is work in progress, that it's always going to be something she wants to work on to make sure that she keeps that new kind of found confidence high so she's not going to be in that same situation again when she wants to move next. So let's... Um, Let's look at some of the methods you can use to boost your confidence in um, your career if you're feeling that it's a bit a bit low. So um, obviously I can't share in the next sort of five minutes or so some um, deep techniques with you, but I am going to give you some uh, ideas that you can play around with that could help you. Um, to, to think about what areas you want to address because self-awareness is key so knowing the thing that is tripping you up the most um, whether it's that inner critic or um, the fact you're kind of scanning for risk and thinking everything's going to go wrong self-awareness is the key because then you can know what to focus on um, because there's lots of ways that you can um, then help yourself so there's something you can do which is about rewriting that narrative so if you've got a very strong script that is telling you well you know there's a limit to what you can achieve there's a you know you've reached your potential you can't go anymore you know if you're hearing that kind of um, voice then there's work you can do about rewriting that narrative because you are in charge of the narrative in your head. It's just we've been playing a particular narrative for a long time. It just feels like it's stuck. It's on kind of the record is broken, but we can write a new narrative. Um, and linked to that is managing the inner critic because the inner critic, what that tends to do is amplify the narrative that you've got in your head. But we have to think about the inner critic as just being the, um, the safety um, instinct within us that wants to keep us safe because the brain's primary function is to keep us safe so the inner critic if it senses you're going to step out of your comfort zone or do something that could be potentially risky and that risk is emotional risk so rejection vulnerability humiliation it's going to try and stop you doing it because it wants to keep you safe it wants you to stop taking action and if you listen to it then you won't take the action but you can manage that inner critic you can reassure that inner critic by basically being self-compassionate you know to yourself and um just giving that inner critic that comfort that actually it's going to be okay this time because of x y or z so changing the dialogue in, in with your inner critic um then you can also do something uh, like i did with my client karen which is capturing your achievements and katie yesterday posted about something called a sunshine journal which when I talk about with clients, it's, I call it an achievement journal, but it's the same kind of thing, where on a daily basis you are capturing achievements that have happened. So that could be good conversations, a bit of feedback, something that you know, you've achieved in the day, something you've ticked off your list, something you'll feel proud of. And you can then read that uh, on a regular basis too. So you're reminding yourself of all the good things that are happening and how great you are at what you do. And, you know, the brain, again, has to hear four positives to equate to the one negative that you might hear. So we do have to work extra hard at really, you know, giving our confidence that boost that we need um, to be able to step out of our comfort zone and go for the kind of jobs that we want to accelerate our career. Um, and so the, the other thing to think about is stepping out of your comfort zone, um, which, you know, if you're going to accelerate your career, you're going to have to think, yes, I'm going to do that. I'm going to step out of my comfort zone. But it's always about doing it in a kind of manageable way. So it's stretch, but not stress. So something called optimal anxiety, where you have enough anxiety to know that you're stepping out of your comfort zone and doing something you haven't done before, but it's not freaking you out and you're feeling completely overwhelmed by it. Um, and what happens is when you step out of your comfort zone, you activate a, a circuit in the brain called the courage circuit, which gives you a dopamine reward, which is the feel good chemical in our brain, which, as you know, when you've done something out of your comfort zone, you, when you finish, you're like, oh, my God, that was amazing. It was so good. I feel great. And it can become addictive. So you want to step out of your comfort zone more and more. So 
it's noticing, okay, I'm going to be stepping out of my comfort zone, but I want to do it in a managed way that doesn't completely stress me out. So um, have a think about some of those ideas for boosting your confidence. I am going to do a confidence live in the group, probably in the next quarter, so in January, my next live will be on confidence. So that will go into this kind of thing in much more detail with you. Um, but I wanted to give you a few ideas about how you can start to think about boosting your confidence if you're going to accelerate your career. I'm hoping that you can see by us breaking it down, by chunking it down, so step one, get clear, step two, get confident, step three, I'm going to introduce you to in a minute, is helping you to see that actually it is possible to move my career forward where I want to be. So step three is going to involve you getting out of your comfort zone though. So step three is get visible. Okay, so step three is um, thinking about getting known um, to the right people in your career. Um, now, this often when I work with clients around this area, people find this tricky um, because it feels a bit scary to get visible because by being visible, you're kind of putting yourself out there, you're um, sharing your views, you're giving opinions, you're contributing, you're maybe posting things um, or sharing things, and it can feel a bit scary and people can get a little bit, you know, I don't want to do it. So, um, so it does involve getting out of your comfort zone, but I'm going to share with you some good reasons to get visible in your career so that you hopefully have a sort of motivation to think about, okay, am I visible in my career at the moment? Do I need to do more? Um, do people know who I am in my organisation and what, what value I bring? Um, so let me know in the comments if you can. Um, I'm somehow not seeing the comments, any comments coming through for some reason. Um, yeah, so uh, let me know in the comments how you feel about being visible. You know, does it scare you? Do you not mind it? Have you done it? Uh, let me know what you think. And um, what I'm going to just talk through now is the reasons to get visible. So, um, but the thing with visibility is to do it authentically because sometimes you get put off because you see people doing it in a way that doesn't feel authentic, that um, feels a bit uncomfortable and that can then put you off because you think if I get visible then maybe people are going to think that's about me. So it's always coming from a place of authenticity when you're thinking about getting visible. But obviously getting visible in your career means that you're going to have exposure to people who can help you in your career. You know, so getting on their radar, um, sometimes it's getting on the radar of the decision makers, sometimes it's getting on radar of people who can help you and support you in your career, who can, you know, champion you or sponsor you. Um, but if, if they don't know who you are, then... Um, you're not going to be top of mind for them should an opportunity come up. And that's either internally or externally. So it's thinking about who, does, who needs to know about me? You know, who do I need to be visible to? And do they know? Have I got work to do around this area? Um, obviously, um, it's great for your career development to get visible because you will be stepping out of your comfort zone by doing some of the actions that visibility um, requires of you in terms of having you know, inform informational interviews with people or virtual coffees or doing a lunch and learn or, you know, whatever it might be. So it's going to push you to develop in your career in some way by being visible. And, um, you know, the more senior you get, then the more, you know, you're going to have to contribute to meetings, lead meetings, um, make presentations, uh, do all of those kind of things that um, mean you being visible. So the more comfortable you can get on your journey to those roles, um, the easier it will be for you. Um, also, it's about getting recognition, you know, because if you're um, working away, but you're not really telling people the challenges that you're facing or the complexity of what you're dealing with, you just deliver, but you keep quiet about it, then um, it's easy for people to think either you're, you know, just coasting, you don't have any challenges in your job, you just, you know, you get to where you get to, um, whereas somebody else who's maybe talking about, well, I had this complex situation and I had to, uh, had to renegotiate this and I had to, um, you know, reconfigure X, 
people are going to think, well, okay, well, they've had some real challenges. They, you know, they've got resilience. They can really deal with these kind of things. So it is about making sure you get the kind of recognition that enables your manager and your manager's manager to understand what you are doing in your role and also what your successes are. And if you're leading a team, what your team's successes are. So it is about just getting comfortable talking about what you do and how you do it so that your manager knows that because they don't see you on a day-to-day -day basis, particularly if you're working remotely, it's even more important to get visible. Um, also, visibility is about you getting your voice heard, that you are listened to, that you can have influence, you can influence decisions. Because if you're not sharing your views, sharing your knowledge, sharing your expertise, then you're depriving the organisation of that valuable contribution that could make you know, really more powerful decisions or better decisions in the organisation. Um, plus, it's great to be able to share success. It gives everybody a boost, doesn't it? In your team, your colleagues, your peers, your, your manager. You know, if you're sharing your successes, it's actually helpful to lots of other people too. It can make them feel really positive. Um, and it helps you to stay relevant because if you're being visible and you're going out more to maybe networking meetings or conferences or internally, you're attending um, other departments meetings or whatever it is you're going to just learn more you're just going to know more from having those conversations with different people so there's lots of really positive reasons about why you should get visible so do let me know how you feel about visibility whether you are um, up for being more visible um, and I'm just going to share with you um, one of my clients from my group program Nicola so she was a VP in financial services and she was uh, plattering in her role, she knew she wanted more, but she wasn't sure about how to promote herself in her organisation, which she's wanted to stay in her organisation, so she was focusing on internal visibility. And so what we did is we actually looked at, okay, what's your, what's your USP, what's your reputation? And she, we discovered she had a great reputation as a really quite compassionate leader in an organisation that necessarily wasn't that kind of leadership style. So she really encouraged her team to develop, to experiment, to fail, to share successes, to share failures, to learn, and that were very high performing. And so um, she then, once she kind of defined her, her personal brand, if you like, she started looking for opportunities to promote that internally. So she looked, and externally, so she looked at um, LinkedIn, she wrote some articles on LinkedIn, she was podcast guest on leadership um, podcasts in her um, in her sector she was really kind of clear about her thought leadership and what differentiated her and how she would promote that internally she sought out opportunities to do that through uh, getting involved in EDI uh, initiatives mentoring younger women in her department and um, what's the other thing she did uh, she found mentors she found mentors who could um, she could resonate with, who could also help her grow in her role. And she then secured a much more senior role in her organisation. And she can definitely attribute it to her getting more visible and positioning herself for the kind of role that she wanted to and being seen in the organisation as a high performing, um, compassionate leader. Um, so the million dollar question is how to get visible particularly when all those confidence things are kicking in you know the fear of it they're wanting to be authentic not knowing how to do it um so what i suggest with clients when we're talking about visibility is to start small you know particularly also because you've probably got a busy job already so trying to then you know add on a visibility strategy is going to be challenging so starting small and experimenting with what works for you is the best way to, to do it and then you can as you get more comfortable with it you can add in more things um, but also to be strategic so you don't want to just put lots of energy into being visible to everybody you need to think about who do I need to be visible to? So is it internally I need to be more visible to my manager, my manager's manager, or the C-suite? Um, externally, is it I'm going to be thinking about applying for a new job, so I want to be visible to recruiters, to future bosses in organisations that I want to work in. So getting clear about who you want to be visible to, and then how you want to do it. So where's your um, sweet spot? You know, Do you like 
writing? Do you like speaking? Would you like to do more online stuff or do you like face to face? Do you want to do it in a kind of group setting or do you prefer one to one? Um, because you want to make it work for you. Um, so then you can think about, okay, could I set up some um, virtual coffees or face to face coffees with people to find out more about what they do, share what I do, share useful information? Do I want to go to join some networking groups? Do I want to um, start looking for conferences that I can attend or even speak at? Do I want to do some internal con stuff? Do I want to run a lunch and learn internally? Do I want to be a podcast guest? Do I actually just want to get more comfortable with talking to my manager about what I do and getting you know, more comfortable with self-promotion? So it's thinking about starting small and being strategic and then also being reflective. So what's worked, what's not for me? Because it's a learning opportunity, this kind of engaging with visibility. But it does involve getting out of your comfort zone. But remember, you're going to get those wonderful dopamine hits every time you step out of your comfort zone. Um, and sometimes it's even just sending a LinkedIn request to somebody that you don't know. That could be, you know, your first step. Um, so, yeah, just have a think about getting visible. But if you want to accelerate your career, it is definitely a big piece of the jigsaw. So step four. So let's just recap. We've got get clear, get confident, get visible. Step four is take action. Okay, I want you to all think about becoming a career activist. So this is my kind of pet project, my hobby horse, my soapbox thing. I want people to feel like they can really drive their own careers because as I say to my clients, nobody is going to be as interested in your career as you. So um, no matter what, you know, if you've got a brilliant boss, they're still not going to be as interested in your career as you. So you've got to shape it and you've got to make it happen and drive it. Um, yes, you can look for people around you to support you, but ultimately you have got to be the one to make it happen, which is why those other steps are really important. So getting clear, getting confident, getting visible, uh, because you can't take action if you don't know what you're taking action for. You know, So you've got to get clear about what that next role looks like for you. Um, so, you know, if you want to be in a new role in 2024, now is the time to start thinking about the action piece and all, well, all, the, all the pieces, but also starting to take some action. Because um, you don't want to be, you know, still in the same position you're in, maybe feeling a bit frustrated in your job um, in a year's time. You know, you want to have moved forward in your career and not be sort of static. So let me tell you about my last uh, client to talk you through. So this is Bianca and she was in my group program. She was a project manager, senior project manager in the public sector. And she was clear, she knew she wanted to become a contractor. So she wanted to have more variety of projects and she wanted to increase her earning potential. So she knew she wanted to move from an employee, where she'd been for quite a few years as an employee, into a contracting role. But she wasn't clear about what steps she needed to take, what actions she needed to make that happen. And so um, we created a specific plan for her in terms of what were the gaps that she needed to fill uh, and what was the kind of the challenges for her in making that that leap. And um, what she did was she sought out opportunities to get the skills in her current role as a paid employee, or her last role as a paid employee, and also increase her visibility. So she started to do things like volunteering to be the steer co-chair, where before she might have sat back and let somebody else chair it, she recognised as a contractor she would probably be in that position where she would have to chair these kind of meetings. So she started volunteering to take on some of the areas of the work that she knew she could do but she just hadn't really pushed herself to do before and then she also identified two mentors um, to uh, support her in that new contracting role because she knew she would need someone who could help her hit the ground running because when you're a contractor you don't get those lovely induction home in periods and also she needed somebody who she could who could be a sounding board and a cheerleader so she had two sort of separate people who could give that to her that she um, put in place. And then she worked on her mindset and her identity because she knew it was going to have to be a big identity shift from being an employee to being a contractor. And she had some limiting beliefs that we had to work through to help her um, let go of some of the things that were getting in her way about 
promoting herself because as a contractor you have to be able to tell the client what you're doing um, so that they retain you or they book you for the next project so she knew she was going to have to get over her, her sort of fear and almost hatred of self-promotion uh, which she did and she then made that successful transition and she's now extremely happy working as a contractor earning far more than she did in her paid employee role so um, how to take action uh, probably is the question uh, on your lips <laughs> so um, again I'm going to give you a few ideas that you can take away so uh, first of all is to be intentional about it so where do I want to be and how am I going to get there so like Bianca she knew where she wanted to be she knew she wanted to be a contractor and she needed to have the how so how am I going to do it what are the gaps I've got to fill um, what do I need to, to support me so having the how and the where are key and being intentional about it then creating time because if you're going to progress your career and accelerate your career you have to create some time for yourself it's not about finding time it's about creating time so you know you could just think about starting small again and thinking okay 30 minutes a week I'm going to focus on my career planning my career acceleration and maybe just setting yourself one action each week that you're going to do and in that 30 minutes you just review how you got on with that action and you set yourself another action we can all find 30 minutes can't we could be 30 minutes of your lunch hour could be 30 minutes of your commute it could be 30 minutes with a glass of wine in the evening it doesn't really matter when it is but it's about creating that little bit of space which you can obviously increase as you get more into it but just starting small is starting and um, it's creating a new habit around your career rather than your career always kind of falling to the bottom of the priority pile then you could think about um, your motivation and checking in on your motivation so you could think about that new job that you want so what's next in your career what's it going to give you so maybe it's going to be a big pay rise so you can think about well what would I do with that money that I'm going to get or maybe it's about I'm going to have more um, creativity or more influence or more um, satisfaction in that role and it's going to increase my well-being I'm going to be a nice person outside work and inside work because I'm going to be happier and that's going to make a big difference to my quality of life and spending time with family and friends whatever it might be but just we want to increase the pull factor of what that new job's going to give you so that you can use it to motivate yourself to make time for your career gaps which I mentioned you want to be identifying what are the gaps that um, I need to fill to be ready for that next role um, and also remembering that you don't have to be perfect you know sometimes people look at a person's spec and Katie will you know know this you know they rule themselves out because they don't have um, you know everything on the job spec Recruiters know people don't always have everything they need. It's going to be a compromise, and you know you can you can show transferability of skills, but it is about noticing which gaps you do need to plug in order to be a credible candidate and making a plan to plug them. Uh, then thinking about who you need, so who can support you with this, both in work but also outside of work. Um, you know something I talk about with my clients is having a personal board, so people who will fulfil different roles for them to help them accelerate their career, like. Bianca had her two mentors who could help her for different things and then obviously making a plan so capturing it writing it down having something specific to work to in a way that works for you everyone likes to plan differently some people like granular some people like overarching whatever it is but just knowing that you've got something to refer to that you can track your progress that you can um, add to that gives you that sense of purpose that you're moving forward in your career okay so let's do um, a quick recap sorry my dog keeps coming in and out um, the four steps are to get clear get confident get visible take action um, so you might feel all of them important you might feel there's one area that's really important for your career but it's really noticing um, you know what's what's resonated with you um, tonight and what you think is going to make the most difference to you to accelerate your career but think about 2024 as being you know 
the goal for you to be in the career that you want to be in. You know, making it a manageable pace. Um, it could be that you know you can do it in three months. It might be six months. But you know, having a plan, being intentional to get your that fulfilling role that fits with your life. That you know is about maybe getting promotion, maybe your first leadership role, maybe about increasing your earning potential, maybe about giving you more meaning to what you do. But knowing that you have um, a way to think about actually accelerating your career and you driving it as a career activist. So um, I'm going to be um, staying on because I've got you know time to answer questions if you've got questions for me about this and I'm also just going to tell you about um, a special offer that I've got just for uh, people in the flexible working uh, Facebook group and um, because if you think actually I want some help to accelerate my career uh, maybe you're tired of kind of trying to make it happen on your own and you think actually well I quite like somebody to to give me the support the challenge the uh, accountability to make it happen then um, I'm going to give you 30% um, discount so a whopping 30% discount on my group program which is called the career success mastermind it's designed uh, over eight weeks to get you really fired up and really clear, really um, intentional about your next career role. It's a small group, so there are limited places in the group. I keep it small so you get real value from it. But over the eight weeks, obviously, we've got the four steps, but we're doing it in much more detail. So we're really kind of um, diving into kind of what you want. We're really focusing on building your confidence, um, looking at creating more impact and influence at work, developing your personal brand, creating a visibility strategy for you that works for you, really doing the job search piece, so creating a fab CV, LinkedIn profile, brushing up on your interview skills so you feel really well set up to get that next role, and having a really intentional plan. So it starts at the beginning of October, so it's eight weeks to get you really ready for January and going into 2024, in the next role that you um, um, you know you want to be in so uh, so if that's something that you could be uh, interested in I'm going to pop a link in the comments which you can book a free 30 minute call with me to just talk it through to work out if it's the right thing for you and I will tell you if it's not the right thing for you um, and also I'll put a link in that gives you more information about the, the mastermind program so you can see that as well when you book your Call, just put FWP as the code so then you I will know that you've come via this webinar and you will obviously get the 30% discount there are also some other fantastic early bird um, op offers as well that you would get if you sign up before the 24th of September so that's it's valid for two weeks um, so if you are thinking about that if that could be helpful to you then do book your um, session with me but I am around now for you if you want to ask any questions um, I'm just looking back at the comments um, so yeah so if you've got a question for me do um, do pop it in sorry I'm just trying to get my links sorted out so um, Sorry, right, okay. Let me get the link sorted out. But yeah, if you've got if you've got a question, um, um, do pop it into the thread now and I will do my best to um, answer that. Um, so let me just get the booking link in there first. Um, and I know it's been a, a kind of crazy whistle stop tour through um, that you know how to accelerate your career but I'm hoping that you've taken away some things you could you know start to think about maybe experiment with um, okay that's the wrong link uh, just okay just bear with me a moment um, while I try and sort this link out um, Okay, so yes, I think I'm doing it now. Um, yeah, so do pop in your questions. I'd love to answer them. 
and let me just put this other link in now. And thank you very much for joining me tonight. I've really enjoyed this whistle stop webinar through <laughs> accelerating your career. Uh, I hope you're feeling inspired and motivated to accelerate your career. Um, and obviously, you know, do um, let me know if you've got any further questions. If not, if there's no questions, then do go and enjoy the rest of your evening. Um, thank you, Juliana. Um, great. If, I'd love to, to have a chat with you about the group programme. Please do book a call with me. Um, if you need an evening call, they're not showing up on the uh, booking, just message me, DM me, and I'll book something in the evening if that's easier for people. But um, yeah, do go and enjoy your evening. I've really loved being on live with you. And um, yeah, Cressida, Cressida, lovely to have you here as well. Great, thank you for joining me. And I'd love to talk to you about the program too. So um, yes, hopefully uh, I'll be speaking to a few of you over the next few days. But do go and enjoy the rest of your evening. And um, I look forward to seeing you all in the Facebook group um, or speaking to you at some point. And, Thank you, Katie, for supporting me tonight and um, helping me out when I couldn't see my comments. Um, lovely. So I will see you all um, very soon. Thank you very much for joining me. Good night.